Hello, gentlemen. Hi, how are you? Really good. Nice to see you. Nice to see you. And it's how we interviewed, like, many of you remember, 20 odd years ago, I guess, 1999. Yeah, yeah. Ooh. And Randy, of course, come across you many, many times over the years. I guess you have to buckle the seatbelt back in. If we're back on, this is the uh, Randy back on after show. Yes. Here. Yeah. Uh, thanks for coming in today. Happy to be here. Um, a George Harrison record. Yeah. How'd that happen? <laughs> Um, a couple of things made it happen. I was invited three years ago to John Lennon's 75th birthday in Liverpool and did the whole Beatle tour thing, you know, the bus strawberry fields and got my hair cut in Penny Lane, the barbershop. And um, the next day, Julia brought brownies. It was John's birthday. Yeah. Gave everybody John glasses. It was very cool. First of all, what kind of brownies? And Chocolate brownies were full of walnuts. He didn't like birthday cake. So no weed, nothing like no, that. No, no, no. Okay. no. <laughs> and uh, well she was giving these to children. And... Uh, so that was really great, and I thought, gee, what can I do to celebrate George's birthday? He's coming out 75th in a couple of years. Yeah. And I had done an album, um, I don't know, long ago, maybe eight or nine years ago, with Burton Cummings, Back and Cummings Jukebox, yeah. where we each picked five or six songs that we used to put in a quarter and get three plays for a quarter. <laughs> and um, after I did my Chuck Berry and Bo Diddley songs and he did his, uh, I wanted to do a George Harrison song and couldn't outdo the way the Beatles did it. Yeah. So I took Happy Just to Dance With You, which George sang in Hard Day's Night, and yeah. did like Clapton doing Layla. Before you dance, I think I'll love you too. I'm so happy you dance with you. That kind of yeah. thing. And everybody liked that because it was a reinterpretation right. done in a different style. So I then embarked on doing something for George's 75th birthday, getting about 50 songs, finding ones I could sing, restructuring them, and then trying to redo them like Lenny Kravitz said, American Woman, or yeah. Ginger Walker did these other, treat it a song to a song, but give it a whole different set of clothes. Yeah, because if you go close to it, yeah, it's going to be really it. People are going to listen to it. Well, you can't rewrite the Lord's Prayer. That's why I didn't do <laughs> my sweet Lord. But in some, we sprinkled George's solos in a different song. Right. So we do a different song in here. You'll hear, and it's over a different song. It's over Don't Bother Me, or one of George's lesser known songs. So there's little s sprinkles of George Harrison solos throughout this and George Martin productions and things backwards and echo right. loops and old Mellotron. We had a lot of fun doing this. So it's like, take any band kind of in, in the a, a certain age range and say, go into a studio and, re and record 12 Beatles songs. Well, you kind of go nuts doing that yeah. and make them different. Tell them you don't know what they are. What did you think when you, when you heard about this project? It sounded, well, it sounded pretty exciting to me, and it was cool to see Dad so passionate about it. And then I, I heard some of these arrangements, and it was really great stuff. Were you, did, at any point, did you give him notes on how to do it? No, I, no, he kind of just did it in the, you know, in the studio with the, the guys in his normal band, but now I'm playing along with him, so. And you say, that's amazing. Right, what are you going to play first? Well, this, well, I'm doing all these George songs, and I'm thinking, what's it like to be George Harrison between Mount McCartney and Mount Lennon? Yeah. You show up at the studio, they've got 30 songs each, they kind of collaborate or collude with each other. And maybe after a couple of days of that, they'd say, hey, George, you got anything? And he'd go, oh, I have a song called Tax Man. I've got a song called <laughs> this and that. And uh, between these two mountains, he grew to be just as big. It was yeah. like the first time we saw the man Sullivan. We used to sing Elvis up front or Gene Vincent or somebody and the backup band. Suddenly there's three guys standing there singing. Yeah. And suddenly that changes for every band. The drummer wanted to sing Ringo songs. I sang George's songs throughout all the guests who and everybody else. So it was like a natural thing for me to do. So I thought, how does George fit in between these two mountains, and I wrote this song in the middle of the night with the ghost of George beside me sending me these lyrics of the eight, uh, not my lyrics, <laughs> but I'm, I'm going to claim, I'm claiming them. All right, go get it. I channeled them, okay, between two mountains. Uh -huh. 